Who knows not Circe, the daughter of the sun, whose charmed cup, whoever tasted, lost his upright shape and downward fell into a groveling swine. The power of Waterhouse works is they have a, an immediacy, they have a drama about them and an accessibility. They have a complexity of meaning, but it's not fixed, it's open enough to allow a contemporary spin to be played on that meaning. And, and that again is a way that a contemporary artist such as myself can play it to a contemporary audience. I don't have any of those attributes of Waterhouse's model, so I inevitably, as soon as I perform the part, I subvert it in some way. The Circe legend, uh, obviously, she was a, a, a woman who could transform men into pigs. Um, Waterhouse's Circe is a particularly voluptuous, a particularly sensual woman in the painting. It's a wonderful painting. It's about strategically sexualizing the body, the way in which she's wearing kind of tra translucent clothing to give you a tantalizing view of the body, uh, of her breasts, a wonderful sensuous lips and so on. These are games I like to play when I make the work. You know, my representation of, of Shalott is of a modern feminist albeit, you know, wearing a long, possibly Victorian dress. And I think if one looks at Waterhouse's painting and forgets about the, the myth of the Camelot story, or as expressed in Tennyson's poem, um, and simply looks at the female subject in his painting, she also looks like a modern feminist. The period Waterhouse was painting in was certainly the early period of feminism. There was huge interest in women's rights, women's issues. Waterhouse's paintings very often feature women who break away from the constraints of their world. It, it occurred at that time in the late 19th century where an awful lot of works seemed to be depicting women as these terrifying predators. My theory is that um, that was because the women's movement was gaining strength at that time, was, was ultimately leading to the suffragettes, to women's emancipation, and it may well be a reaction on the part of male artists particularly to then depict them as these rather frightening predators. artist. Well, I've chosen to not try to be a man anymore in my life. And I might work from a woman's point of view uh, by masquerading as a woman and often looking at things which are embedded in our culture that are misogynistic basically. The fact that I'm a middle-aged transvestite instantly subverts that tradition, that stereotype of both sexualizing women and condemning them to particular roles often defined by patriarchal society or by male artists. My wife had difficulties initially uh, with the idea. I suppose from a conventional point of view she thought She'd married a man and was perhaps a little disconcerted by the announcement that this man had chosen to be a woman. The first big moment was when my older daughter got married. Weddings are a place where there are lots of relations from the extended family. And I was a bit nervous about how they would accept the fact that I had a beautifully tailored 
jacket but an extremely short miniskirt at the time and the highest heels that I could manage the day in. Uh, however, all, all went very successfully and there I was even further in the public domain. <laughs> This piece here is actually my version of uh, quite a famous painting by Sir Lawrence Elmer Tadema, made in the late 19th century. A lot of other painters of the time tended to make portrayals of highly eroticized young women, uh, which were clearly made for the kind of sexual titillation of a, of a male audience. So I thought I'd make it slightly more explicit in my piece. A number of viewers who visit the exhibition were obviously shocked and scandalised. Somebody wrote, didn't like the transvestite art and asked how anyone could explain it to their children. And my version of, of this was the first piece that's ever been defaced. We seem to live in a culture where it's OK if it's a joke. If you're a comedian in drag, then you're very funny. Otherwise, for many people, it's a kind of shorthand for the fact that you're gay. I'm really trying to set myself apart from those things and say, this is a perfectly normal decision for somebody to make um, in life.